You see, homelessness is merely that last rung on a downward spiral of missed opportunities. At that point, we've gone by the rung that talked about education, gone by the rung that talked about jobs, gone by the rung that talked about treating depression and substance abuse and safe housing. And so homelessness becomes sort of the easy thing to see. We have to do it all, and we have to do it all simultaneously. It's the proverbial full court press from jump ball to the final whistle. And here's how we're beginning to take it on. I don't know that we have all the answers, but I can tell you we have 600 terrific partners out there across this country in towns and cities who are the creative geniuses and how to help us solve this problem. Let me talk about education. First of all, we're implementing the post 9-11 GI Bill. Fantastic program, uh, thanks to Congress. Uh, not without issues, we're still struggling with implementing some of it, but it's a powerful option for qualified veterans to pursue a fully funded degree completion program at a state college or university of their choice the largest program of educational benefits for veterans since the original GI Bill of 1944. Original GI Bill of 1944? <laughs> Let me just remind us what that original bill of 1944 did. It was only around for 12 years. Entitlements ended in 1956, but in that 12-year period, our nation generated, through this program, 450,000 trained engineers, 240,000 accountants, 280,000 teachers, 91,000 scientists, 67,000 physicians, 22,000 dentists, and by the early 1960s, more than half the members of the United States Congress. They and a million and a million other college-educated veterans went on to provide the leadership that catapulted our economy to being number one in the world and our nation to being leader of the free world. That came out of that program, 12 years of investment, leader of the free world and victor in the Cold War. This new post-9-11 GI Bill has every opportunity to have history repeat itself and we may be all witnesses to it. My request of you, let's all, because these kids go to school in your towns and communities, let's all help them make it to graduation day. Right now, all of us are looking at how to get them in the front door. I'm looking at graduation rates. Until they graduate, there's no payoff uh, for the program. We gotta have them make that graduation uh, ceremony. Next, jobs. VA puts veterans first, both in its hiring and its contracting. We do that in the Veterans First program. 30% of our workforce are veterans. In some places, it's as high as 70% in some offices. But across VA, 30% of our workforce are veterans. And we will improve on those numbers in the years ahead. Last year, in a survey conducted by the Society for Human Resource Management, over 90% of employers said they valued veteran skills especially their strong sense of responsibility and teamwork. VA puts veterans first in its contracting awards. In FY 2008, and I apologize for not having the 2009 figures, it always amazes me how you can be uh, two months beyond the end of a fiscal year and you're still collecting data. But in FY 2008, $1.65 billion in VA contracts went to service disabled veteran-owned small businesses. We are collaborating with the Small Business Administration and General Services Administration to certify veteran-owned small businesses and service uh, disabled veteran-owned small businesses for listing on the Federal Supply Register, improving both their visibility and enhancing their competitiveness for federal supply contracts. Why these initiatives? Because veterans hire veterans. That's the record, that's the history. Veterans hire veterans because they know what they're getting. So creating more veteran-owned small businesses increases our opportunities for get, getting veterans into the workforce. Healthcare. 
In 2010, VA will spend $3.2 billion to prevent and reduce homelessness amongst veterans, $3.2 billion. Of that $3.2 billion, $2.7 billion goes to medical services, primarily dealing with the general health of veterans, but heavily invested in mental health and substance abuse. 85% of homeless funding going to health care tells you that, in large measure, homelessness is a health care issue. The psychological wounds of war affect every generation of veterans. Every generation of veterans, including each of us in the room. We must aggressively diagnose and treat these unseen wounds to address other portions of that downward spiral I uh, described that often result, we know where it ends up, often result severe personal isolation, dysfunctional behaviors, losses of identity, confidence, personal direction, shattered relationships, depression, substance abuse. We know the cycle. We've watched it for years. We've watched one entire generation go through it. the Vietnam generation. We're not going to let that happen to this generation of kids. <laughs> Last month, DOD and VA co-hosted for the first time a national summit on mental health, attended by over 300 mental health professionals from across the country as well as military and veterans advocacy groups. Out of that summit will comes, uh, come a consensus report and a plan for better coordinating between VA and DOD our mental health efforts. VA now employs over 19,000 mental health professionals. We also run a national suicide prevention hotline that has great credentials. We know that if we diagnose and treat, people usually get better. If we don't, they generally won't, and in some, some cases, the problems become debilitating. We understand there is a stigma issue here, and all of you know that as well as I do. We also have an issue of youth. For the youngsters in the age 20s, they have a hard time seeing themselves as vulnerable and in need of help. It's that invincibility of youth, and all of us went through it. And we ought to understand that. And we have to help them come out of that sense of invincibility and accept the help we're extending to them. We understand the stigma issue, but we're not going to be dissuaded by it and dissuaded from providing mental health care and returning hope to our veterans who need it, especially our homeless veterans. Housing. Health care alone will not end hom homelessness. It is not a mechanical exercise of taking 131,000 people off the street. We could do that in a couple of weeks with enough you know, uh, transportation assets. We're talking about preventing it and not allowing uh, this blight to uh, be visited on our veterans. But safe housing is one of those issues we have to work. We need additional housing to take, take in those who slip through our safety nets and we currently partner with more than 600 community organizers all across the country that manage roughly 16,000 housing bids across the country. So when we talk about uh, homeless shelters for veterans, we usually count bids. That's sort of the, you know, the, the, the metric of, uh, uh, that drives that discussion. It's a, it's a bid count. In our collaboration with the Department of uh, housing and Urban Development, and, and Secretary Sean Donovan has been an absolute uh, prince about this. Uh, we have also grown our relationship with them in scale and measurable results. And here's why it's important. 